Hi, everyone. My name is Yanita, like Yanita Cup of Coffee. You get started in the morning. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Sidekick, and we set out to disrupt how people get things done to improve their quality of life. And we're focusing on the retail insurance agency um, industry because that's the one that we are in. So as insurance agents ourselves, we know that it's hard work. And it has tons of moving parts, as you'll see here. And it's a product that's not very sexy. It's not like buying a new phone. People don't really understand it. And when they're talking to you, they generally have a problem. So it's a high stress environment. Forget trying to grow a team and grow your business and have a life. So we started studying this because we thought we were the only ones experiencing these problems. We met with agents of different markets, different levels of success, and found that they're all struggling with similar issues. Critical time sensitive tasks go undone, period. An example, change of address, change of a bank account. The day is filled with a whirlwind of new tasks coming in, and then they're developing this junk drawer of tasks that continue to go undone. We learned that if a task goes undone, it can generate six to seven months worth of extra work for the agency. And we did a postmortem on tons of incomplete activities at different agencies and found that the common activities that are in this junk drawer, they're preventable, they're avoidable mistakes. And they generally find out when the client calls in to say, I have a problem with my bill. So they're constantly in a reactive state. And this leads to lost revenue, um, lots of stress and employee turnover. Our solution is a suite of web-based tools with a dedicated process that we've studied and most importantly, a daily practice of accountability. So the team can share the weight of the management tasks and the leaders can do what they do best and everyone else can get more work done. All right, at the backbone of our solution, the sidekick is what we call the check-ins. The check-ins are a series of curated questions that people on the team ask each other throughout the day. So I'll give you some examples. I'm your sidekick and I show up and this is running an iPad and the questions that I'm gonna ask you will be different than the ones I ask you because the questions live on a database and they're tied to the different players on the team based on their roles and responsibilities. A receptionist may get asked questions about voicemail in front of the house. An account manager may get asked questions about leads and follow-ups. Some key questions that are in there are pretty much to keep everyone focused on the priorities of the day. What's the hardest one? What's our best sales opportunity today? What can you commit to today? And this provides a level of transparency that doesn't exist today in an office. Some of the questions in there are, uh, what's in your inbox? What's in your voicemail? And we start collecting them, and we create what are called lifesavers. So let's say we all have a shared to-do list. Everyone knows that I have 100 things to do today. But nobody in the office knows the sticky note that's on my desk, the phone call I just took. These check-ins that happen two to three times a day capture these. So they act as a net under all of these moving parts of the agency to make sure nothing falls through the cracks. So the lifesaver list can then be looked at by anyone on the team. In the event that somebody leaves unexpectedly, the team isn't left scrambling. The attendance feature allows you to adapt to real world events. Turnover, somebody leaves early. They don't come back for three days. This allows us to assign, reassign critical tasks that that person was responsible for. Team Do then allows you to see what is happening, you, everyone on the team. And you can see everyone's workload, you can see who's got uh, more work to do than somebody else and how you can redistribute to make sure all these activities get done in one day. Teams that have been using Sidekick have seen an increase in daily sales, customer retention, and the team morale has changed drastically. Our business model is monthly subscription. Uh, average would be, depending on the size of the agency, about $60 a month with some initial onboarding fees we believe each agency represents $1,000 per year. Our goal is to sign up 1,000 agencies in the first 18 months with our potential 1 million revenue. The insurance market, this is where we started. We believe this is not a problem specific to insurance industries, but in this market, it's a $157 billion industry with 400,000 independent agencies out there in the US. If we get 1% of that market, we believe that would lead to $3 million potential revenue for the company. We're super proud of our traction. So we've tested our prototype for about a year at the number one agent in the largest insurer in America. Together, we fine tune our product and we've now released our minimum viable product. It's being in use by five agencies in a pilot program and people are checking in every day and they're seeing changes almost instantly. 
we have a robust library of testimonial videos of these team members who have experienced the change and transformation in their life. And we now have a waiting list of people who want the product. Um, so we are in the process of, oh, this is our team, um, rolling out, uh, turning our MVP into our uh, commercial product that we can then scale. Our team, we're really excited about our team. I've been in the insurance industry for many years. We've had an amazing developer and a customer success person who can really relate to the users. Um, and what we're looking for is honest feedback, access to advisors. We're in the process of fundraising our first round, uh, half a million dollars we're looking for. And so I'm looking for access to stakeholders who can really help us scale and grow. Thank you. I love all the um, animated characters. Is this your superhero team? Yes, it's a superhero theme because we want everyone to feel like a superhero. <laughs> Well, thank you for the presentation and congratulations on the success that you've had already. That's awesome. Thank you. So we're going to kick off the Q&A. We have 15 more minutes. Who's going to be first? Spencer, I know you're back there. I remember your name. I'm just stopping here because it's convenient for me. And I remember his name, too. Nice presentation. A uh, question for you. So this is really similar to a CRM software package um, that, that a business would have in the sense of keeping track of all contacts and communications with your customers. So my question is, what would be different about, and I think the problem you have with any kind of CRM software is, it's only as good as the input, the information that is recorded and documented by the individuals. So how do you do that? Great question. And just to clarify, it's slightly different than a CRM. This is ma made intended to be used by a team. This is not collecting the customer data and tracking the, the leads. This is a team, we're on the same team, and you may be my boss and you might be my partner, and what's different about it is that I come to you and I ask you what's on your desk, and I ask you what's on your plate, and you ask me what's on my plate. So we as a team don't let anything fall through the cracks because it happens that unexpectedly I go home and I don't come back because my kid's sick. And then what would happen is that person doesn't get a call back for two days and we just now lost a client and we lost a lead. So it's not a CRM tool the way um, you're used to thinking about it. And it's also not a to-do list like the asanas and boot camps of the world. Those become junk drawers. And the purpose of Sidekick is to manage that junk drawer collectively so nobody drowns in their junk drawer. Okay, so how do you, if somebody does not, forgets to give you information, that that sticky note got lost. It's still like a, it still has that potential. What I'm just saying is that it didn't get communicated to the team because somebody did not communicate it because they either forgot or mm -hmm. chose not to or whatever. So there's still that part of it. Yeah, there still is. And so what we find is that sometimes teams, uh, the goal is that they check in with each other three times a day, and depending on the whirlwind of the day, that's usually not possible. We find that they can do it two times a day, and if it's really busy, they do it one once a day. And this is what we've been testing. It turns out they love it, and now they crave it, and they, it gives them a sort of safety net. So they want to share this information because it provides accountability and someone's got their back. Um, so if it does get skipped, the amount of time of triage, let's say, is shortened because someone is coming back the next day to ask you again. And so the goal is to eliminate and minimize the number of times that that sticky gets lost. Thank you. So again, I, re I like the product. I don't really know a lot about the industry, so I'm not really sure how much of a market gap is there. But also, I think that the feedback you got kind of speaks for itself. If you have people on the verge of tears, uh, that's probably a good sign for MVP. My, my question deals more with how did you establish your price point? And what is the logic behind why you want to take on investors? Because it seems like you have a high value product in a high value industry, uh, you have your wait listed. Um, so what's the logic behind your $60 a month price point and why you would want to take on an investor? Awesome, great questions. We uh, chose our pricing based on two things. A, the current industry, there's a certain threshold for things that they pay. They're, they're used to paying monthly for this tool or that tool. Um, and to answer your question, in the space that we live in, most of the tools for insurance agents are based on sales and how to improve your sales, and they're lacking this sort of holistic piece. 
And we also have some competitors that do a similar thing, slightly different um, in, for the food industry, let's say, or for very technical, like plumbers, what have you. And this is the general price point that they pay. So it's a certain dollar amount for your first five or six users, and then it's an extra fee for either more users or multiple locations. So we did it based on what the industry's used to paying for these types of products and what other similar industries are charging. The reason we're looking for investors is because we've bootstrapped all the way. We've been doing this for about three years. And while we can continue doing so, we believe we will scale quicker and validate the results quicker. And we have other markets we're interested in getting to. And we have two other rad products that we are dying to get out there. So really, it's to move fast. Mm -hmm. Can you talk with us about your cost structure? You know, it's interesting, I think, to an audience when you hear about the revenue side and what the potential is, but we know that's revenue, right? So as you look to scale, like what is your cost structure currently today, and what can you share about your margins and how they're going to change as you start to scale? Well, this is all sort of, and this stage is new for us. As we've been developing the MVP, and as you heard him talk, there's been a lot of work in perfecting the product. We try to be craftsmen when we were creating this. So the costs that we see are really um, sales and the support. What we're presenting is not just another widget. It's really a behavior change, behavioral change in the workplace. And so we believe that the onboarding process is going to be critical in keeping our customers and minimizing our churn later. So where we believe we need to spend our money initially is the sales team so that we can grow quickly and the service component so that we make sure everybody understands how to best integrate this for their team and to be determined as we continue to, to grow. Mm -hmm. Couple of questions, well actually four. Um, all of the screenshots I saw seem to be web-based. Is there a mobile component as well? It's web-based, it's a web app, um, and it can be run on an iPad. It was designed to be run on a tablet, really. But this allows agents who are not um, in interfacing with it to be at their desk as well. So it's not only on your phone. Excellent. So you talked about the check-in process. Is that a manual thing, or does the software like prompt me throughout the day? Yes, the software does. And so there are, like we said, we, we believe three times a day is the key. And so now what teams are doing is the first thing in the morning, they do it before they start their day. When they come back from lunch, they catch people after lunch. And right before they leave, they catch them again. So to get started, it all starts and ends here on this tablet. So sure, it can ding and remind you that it's time to do it, but they are clinging to it and are using it as sort of a, a like I said, a safety net. So the, the app guides you through the questions and they're already thought out based on the person who you're checking in. Excellent, so two things. Um, one, Franklin Covey organization has a program called the Four Ds of Discipline. Yes. And this matches so beautifully up to that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure there's some, you're, it appears you've gone down that path. Um, Another thing that I would love to connect up with your developer because I'm all about sharing. Um, we are currently beta testing a pilot in Boston with Fidelity. Ooh. So that um, if you and I are on the same team and I walk into your cubicle, the app opens and shows me only the checklist tasks that you and I have oh, in common. Awesome. I don't have to do anything, it just automatically pulls up. So that's that. something I think mm -hmm. would be really cool as an enhancement and we could mm -hmm. potentially talk about Sure, what that looks sure. like for an integration with your tool. Well, Paul, our developer is in the back right there. He's waving his hand, so definitely. That sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. You had much longer hair in your, uh, in your superhero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the hat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Paul, is there anything that you want to chime in on from what we've heard so far? Um, I'll bring the mic to you, but I just want to make sure that since you're here, may as well add in. First off, I'm not real good at this part. I did want to end, uh, comment on the gentleman's first question. This product goes way beyond CRM. This is capturing literally any responsibility or activity in office or even uh, any kind of a job that someone has. And in our phase two and phase three, that person will be actually be able to interact with the application and mark off, you know, I, yes, I did this, yes, I did that, and these things will pop up. One of the critical parts of our thing is when you're out of the office and you have critical tasks that have to be done today, our system will know, somebody will say, yes, you're not going to be here today, and the system will automatically start notifying somebody that says, 
this is not going to get done. You need to give this to somebody or you already have a backup assigned to this task and they get a notification that says, hey, you know, George is out of the office today. You need to handle this. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. I think we had a couple more questions here. I would describe this as a collaborative workflow software. Okay, and it ties to the CRM. You can tie it to a CRM like Salesforce, right? In the future, we're hoping okay. to do so. All right, who did you benchmark? This is a collaborative workflow software, and there are some out there, but it's more designed for enterprises. If you talk about an agency, you can have some very large agencies, but uh, most of the collaborative software out there now is enterprise. Did you benchmark any of those? That's an interesting question. Uh, you know, we started everything from our lens as the user in this small agency with the hope to eventually go, I mean, we believe this is a problem not unique to insurance agencies. I have a CPA who's interested in this. I have a marketing agency who's interested in this. And potentially it would reach the enterprise level eventually, but we feel that it's an underserved market. The small agents, just, nope, it's messy. Nobody wants to deal with it. Well, you mm -hmm. said fidelity. Most enterprises already have some type of collaborative software. It depends on what job discipline is using that. What's interesting Most about engineering oh, sorry. companies use it now. Yeah. That's what, been around for 25 years. Mm -hmm. So we are, I, my husband and I are State Farm insurance agents. Right. And we're not quite a franchise, but it's similar to a franchise. And what happens in franchises, in franchisees, you are trapped to the software they give you. You have to use it. And it's oftentimes lacking. And so we find that there is a big gap between franchisees, because there's other franchisees we've been working with and talking to, that say, I wish I could use some other tool that's out there, but I can't, because I'm already paying for this one. And they need something to bridge the gap between what they're trapped into, let's say, and what they wish they could do. So that's another area we're looking at, franchisees, who don't have as much flexibility. Hi. So you said that you're going, your plan is to acquire 1,000 customers in the next 18 months. Can you take us through some of the steps that you're taking to get there? Yes. Well, what we're, uh, like I mentioned, this is a big um, change management piece. And so what we're focusing on now to take our MVP to be able to do that is the onboarding so that someone can understand the psychological components like the agents and the team members. How do you pick the best sidekick on your team? How do you train them? How do you train the people to see this as a help and not as micromanagement? Um, and as we're developing that, because we're working with the agencies hands-on right now, we're developing this content. Once that is ready, we believe people can onboard themselves with minimal interaction from corporate and at the same time developing our sales team. We have experience developing a sales team, acquisition model. You know, there'll be a few reps who are out there pitching to study groups, pitching to sales leaders and to other industry events where we can pitch more people at the same time. What's the typical sales cycle in your industry to sell some product like this? From what I can see, um, there's really not much out there, and this hasn't been my experience. I've been behind the insurance agency all this time, but so far, nobody has said no to us. I go to pitch somebody and I talk to them for an hour, and they want it instantly. So to be determined what the sales cycle is gonna be, we know that to introduce this into an office, it's been a total of three meetings where we pitch, then we talk to the key team members in the office, and then we train and implement and we're trying to shorten that cycle. How long is the onboarding process when you talk about training and implementation? It really depends on the size of the agency and on the dynamics of the agency. Some people are um, running really outdated systems, and so they've had team members that have been there for 20 or 30 years and don't want to change. But then, so our target market for this initial phase are agents that are five to 10 years in because the longer they've been an agent, the harder it is to make a drastic sort of like paradigm shift like this in their office. So we are learning that as we speak, how long the onboarding process takes. But we've seen one small office that was really agile, pick it up in a week, they were good to go. A large agent, the one where we did our prototype, it took about six months to get everybody to buy into it. Okay, that, that may have uh, answered my question. My question was like, why you have a waiting list? Why aren't, why aren't you just getting it out to as many uh, uh, agencies as possible? Is it because the onboarding process takes 
that much time. Yeah, and we, uh, so we, we rolled out our MVP, what was it, a month ago? And so we just want to stabilize it, and we want to, so we did a beta test on a paper prototype for many, many, many months, and so now we're running our beta test with this prototype, with the web app, to make sure that it works and to get feedback from users so we can shorten that feedback loop and launch. Basically, we want to validate our theories before we spend a ton of money finalizing it. Does that make sense? So last couple of questions. Now, Bert mentioned there's a lot of software, as you said, to already in place. Agencies have their own. So are you licensing this? I can't recall from the slides. Is this a, a licensed platform to the agencies? Uh, it's a license. Are they replacing their existing no. platforms with no, no, this no, no, one, or no, no. is it complementary? This is intended to complement what they are currently using, and it's a monthly subscription, and they use it as they need it. Um, so everyone has to use their current CRM, and this allows them to leverage everything that's happening in their office okay, cool. in a way like never before. And then the very last question, you've already stated what you need. Um, it is just about 10 o'clock, so we're wrapping up. Just, But tell us, out of all of these things, what is the most important thing? Like, give us the number one. I would like referrals to other insurance agents, because we have been um, we are in the State Farm space. State Farm Insurance is a massive company, and if we stay in State Farm for some period of time, there are 18,000 State Farm agents. So we will be busy with just State Farm, but we're looking to replicate this outside of State Farm, and especially independent insurance brokers, to see if this would also be valuable to them. Cool, thank you so much. Yeah. So referrals. Awesome, thank yeah. you.